You're listening to, or watching, the Talk With Your Mouthful podcast, a podcast series that features real conversations with real families about mental health and substance use disorders. This episode features topics such as peer pressure at school, vaping, and the struggle of balancing academics with extracurriculars. This episode was graciously filmed on location at Dada in Delray Beach, Florida. We thank Dada for their hospitality, great service, and great food. We encourage you to check them out if you're ever in the area. Right. Hi. Hi, I'm Heather. I'll be taking care of you tonight. Hello. I'm going to get some ice waters out for you while you're getting settled. Okay. Oh, did anyone want anything besides ice water at the moment? Uh, I'll have a club soda. Lime? Yeah, yes. Lime. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. I'll get that for now. Um, I have menus on the table. I do have some appetizers. I'm going to get going for you guys. But yeah, if you have any questions, let me know, okay? Right. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. So I suppose I should make sure everybody knows my name and make sure every, I mean, you guys all know each other, yeah. but we're going to go around anyway. All right. So I'm Teresa. My last name is Bayros, but my name's Teresa. So you can just call me Teresa. Um, I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, which is a fancy way of saying I'm a counselor. And I have been doing this for 20 years. And I specialize in working with kids and teens and parents. So that's my specialty so hopefully I can be useful and sometimes I can be a little kooky so we'll have a fun dinner so let's just make sure we go around the table yeah. I'm Thomas Thomas I am Troy Troy I'm Kim Carolina Isabella Isabella do you prefer Isabella or Bella 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 I like it I like it and so let's go over with ages the ally um, I'm 35. Um, yep. Okay. We're all 35. Okay. Okay. Excellent. So everyone's 35. Okay. Um, how old are you guys? Please don't lie. <laughs> I'm 14. 14. I am 13. 13. I'm 11. 11. So that is, so let's see, we're going to test me out. So that's sixth grade. I already remember that you're a freshman yeah. and eighth grade. Yes. yes. Right on. Can we decide on dinner just so I can get the menus out of the way and make room for the appetizers? Yes. yes. <laughs> yes. I'm gonna have the messy board. The messy board? Yes. Um, can I just have a hamburger? Yes. How did you want that one cooked? Um, like, well done. Well done, you got it. Thank you. Free bird for me. Thank you. Uh, can I get a hamburger without cheese? Yes. Do you want that medium rare? Uh, yes, please. Yes. Yeah. Um, can I get a hamburger? Yes. And I uh, want that medium rare. You got it. Thank you. Surprise me. How was your middle school experience? It's awkward. It's an awkward stage. It's a transition from, you know, you're a kid and then you go to high school and you're an adult. So it was awkward for me. I had braces, pimples. My hair was out to here with the Aquanet. I hope I didn't age myself. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's different today. We were outside all the time. Now the kids are, you know, they have the electronics and things like that. So it's a different time now. Yeah, so, it's a whole, it's a whole other. Yeah, I try to keep them active. I'm active just to keep us outside of that. Yeah. Well, I think that helps sometimes too, because if you're able to keep them engaged in activities, um, then they're always in your wheelhouse, right? You yeah. know how to talk sports, right? Oh, but, yeah. but if we're starting to talk TikTok stuff or Instagram no stuff idea. or emojis. Neither do I. I don't really yeah. use emojis. See, I don't know that, either. I don't use them that much. I'm afraid to use them because what if I use the wrong one and yeah. somebody's mad and I meant I said something I didn't mean. Yeah, I just use words. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. yes, and I'm just trying to spell them right. <laughs> you have your own phone? Yeah. You guys have your own phone? Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. How does everybody feel about having a phone in school? Um, it's kind of nice. I keep them in my pocket, so, like, I literally can't lose it. It's impossible yeah. to lose it. For me, I, like, just have mine off in my backpack because our school doesn't really allow them that much. And then at the end of the day, we're able to, like, contact our parents yeah, for dismissal. Very good. So very good. I like to hear that because I find it very annoying when I'm in schools and the kids are all on their phones. And I can say, put your phone away, and the teacher says, put your phone away, and the phone never goes away. 
Oh yeah, that always happens. It always happens. Yeah. Part of what I think is important for us to talk about today is peer pressure. Because I think middle school always has a lot of drama, right? And that carries over into the freshman year of high school. So how do you think the phones contribute to the drama? Social media, yeah, I would definitely say. Definitely social media related sites. Yeah. Stuff like that, yeah, like Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram. Oh, and the TikTok challenges? Oh, oh, oh those are, don't even get me started. That, that's, a, that's an all-time low right there. They're terrible. Yeah, last year, um, people, last year people were like, the principals and all the teachers were saying how like this time there's no phones allowed or they'll confiscate them. Kids doing TikTok challenges and like teachers like, couldn't really yeah. say no because they didn't have policies, so they grade, just said like, no. Like you could have them out, you just couldn't really be using them. Yeah. But like I like from what I've been hearing, you can't have it out at all. Like, That's so times have changed from two years ago. Look where we're at now because of everything going on. Yeah. Well, those TikTok challenges were starting to get pretty like disturbing. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, stealing things. Yeah. I think there was one about like hitting teachers. And I thought, my gosh. Yeah. There was one really stupid one where it's called the Skull Baker Challenge and there would be three oh, yeah. people and the person in the middle would jump and the two people on the side would kick the feet under them. Oh. Yeah, it literally broke yeah, skulls. No, it's not. It's, it's, it's not. not good. Really? See, I think one of the things that gets difficult when those are the things happening is that what do you do if you're walking down the hallway and a bunch of kids are doing that? How comfortable are you saying you shouldn't do that? And how many times will you say you shouldn't do that before you say, I don't know, I guess I'm not going to say it anymore? It's hard to tell somebody else they're breaking a rule. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like, that. yeah. And I think that's what peer pressure is about, right? When we run into, I know what the right thing is to do, and I know we shouldn't be doing that, but I don't want to be the mom in the group. I don't want to be the dad in the group here. And then what if they turn on me? Have you ever had that happen? Not really. I think I like try to make close, close friends that really won't do yeah. anything. See? So I don't have that many. Like, I'm not I've one of the kids who, like. Yeah. Uh -oh. I actually have one of my friends is in my, from my elementary school. Oh. So. That's nice. Yeah, it was like the first day of school was way less stressful because yeah, I knew, so I knew someone, yeah. Now, I don't know what peer pressure looks like for boys, though. Because. I wasn't a boy, <laughs> so I don't know. And I think it can be a little different. We have all the peer pressure that we end up competing with the girls, who has the best hair, who's got the best outfit, who gets to wear makeup before everyone else, right? Yeah. Are your friends all wearing makeup yet? Some of them. Like, it's like half half. Okay. Does your mom let you wear makeup to school? Like, it has to be very little, like maybe some lip gloss, but it can't be like, Nothing flashy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I like that. She's a dancer too, so she knows what she's doing. That's right. That <laughs> yeah. is, you're a pro. She's better than me. Yeah. Oh well. That's, do you do mom's makeup? I have. Oh, before. that's awesome. She's gonna have a YouTube channel. Oh yeah. Are you gonna do that? Maybe. <laughs> now, how about for for boys? What do you think is? Tell me what peer pressure is like for boys. Well, I mean, we haven't really experienced too much of it, but I feel like it's when you're making a decision. It's kind of influenced by who's around you. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't really consist of many things different from uh, what girls do. Yeah. So the research showed that during COVID, the rate of substance use among kids went down. Um, and so, of course, we think that's because they weren't hanging out with their friends, mm -hmm. right? So there's no peer pressure. Yeah. But what we found was that substance use rates among adults went up. Wow. Went up. What do you think that's about? Maybe, like, more, like, 
expressive thoughts, I would say, because they're more confined to one place. Mm -hmm. They're not out doing things. They're probably like building up stress. And some of those emotions are probably getting to them, so they probably decide to smoke or drink alcohol. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like they don't have a, a different type of yeah. coping skill. I like to think, what do you, I mean, what do you think that's about? I think so too. Yeah. I think they don't know how, like, they didn't know how to cope, so they went right to, you know. I feel like it's mostly increased with extroverts, because they can't, like, they just want to get up and do oh, something. Oh, yeah. It, COVID was hard for us mm -hmm. extroverts. Mm -hmm. For me, <laughs> I like doing things. I'm always busy. So oh, really she was always jabbing to... about, like, oh, we could have went to the beach and all that, well, we, yeah. We would do outside activities. Oh, yes. Yeah. And try and, and get she works out, out, like, every day, so it's... It was just, that was difficult. I had to work out from home, oh, but yeah. that was my outlet. Yes, yeah. So maybe if you weren't able to do that, then oh, you'd yeah. have no, to find I other lost coping it. skills. I would have yeah. to find something else, yeah. yeah. You have to find something that's going to... Yeah. yeah, to kind of relieve, relieve some of that. Relieve the stress, yeah. Yeah, and I think some of it, too, is when you think about, you know, adults make better decisions in groups because I think we brainstorm, oh, and there's sure. always someone else who's more comfortable saying, well, I think this would be a good idea or that would be a good idea, and then collectively we can make better choices, whereas it's not that way with kids. You guys don't make good decisions in groups. Yeah. You just don't. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like, like over the pandemic, like, kids found a way to cope with it because they had electronics, so, like, they could play video games and talk with each other on the phone and stuff. Mm -hmm. That could be good or bad because it could be, it could be excessive good. unless we had to like monitor them. Okay, this is enough time. Let's step away and let's do something else. Get your mind off that. Mm -hmm. And let's go outside and play tennis in the street or oh, play cards or, yeah. you know, just to try. I think it was also fun because you got to spend a lot more time with your family every day. Because yeah. like with me, I have school and then I have to go straight home. And then I have to usually go straight from school to dance sometimes. And then at home at like nighttime, so I don't really get to see them unless it's the weekend. So. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, you noticed yeah. how much you miss them. Yeah. Oh. So that's the nicest thing I've heard about COVID. <laughs> yes. oh, I feel like online school was so much easier. There was so much less stress. You you got really? to relax. While really? Learning. It was great. Yeah. They did good on with online. Not yeah. all kids the did. Only, the only the the only thing I found a little difficult with it, it was it was a little harder to learn since you were like you would get distracted easily by like things in your room, oh. stuff going yeah, off, you know. Yeah. And yeah, as you terrible. said, it would be harder to focus. I can't focus on anything. Yeah. It's a, it's a, I'm a hot mess if I have to do an online class. Oh, it's terrible. I'm begging people. Please, can we do this in person? Yeah, it was sad because you were missing your friends too. Yeah. I was like my third and fourth year, and I was supposed to go to Disney that year, and oh. I didn't get to go. And then the next oh, year, I was supposed to go in fifth grade. I was supposed to go to Washington D.C. Oh no, you missed the Washington D.C. Yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah, yeah. That was... I barely made it by like oh, yeah. a, couple made it by a couple weeks. Oh, I was yeah. so lucky. Yes, you were very lucky. Well, you'll go someday. Yeah, we were planning on going very soon, so. I like Washington, D.C. It's it was very fun. fun. Yeah, there was very a lot fun. of things to explore. So much yeah. to see. Yeah. Do you like museums? Yes. Oh, yeah. they have a lot of them. Bro. Yes. My well, phone has like 600 photos just oh, from that cool. trip. Yeah. <laughs> it was just like yeah, all from that. museums. Mm -hmm. We're here with the podcast being about preventing substance abuse, mm -hmm. but what we know is you can prevent substance use and prevent the development of the disease of addiction through conversations. So, how do you guys know when it's time to ask your parents, what does this mean? Like, when do you know, like, do you, like vaping? I'm sure you guys are all familiar with vaping. Yeah. You must be in the high school, and you certainly oh, yeah. with the middle school, yeah. and it's already an issue at DC. So when did you think like, wow, I'm, I should ask my mom? Well, like in fourth and fifth grade, those are the years they start like teaching you at the end of the year about all of those things. Yeah. So yep. I think before they started teaching us, I kind of wanted to know because I felt more comfortable with my parents than at the school. Yeah. So then I kind of knew 
going into the lesson, so it felt nice to know. Oh, okay. So you had talked to your parents before you took the lesson. Yeah. I always, we always try to talk yeah. about things, even if I know if she's going to learn it ahead of time, so that she, if she, yeah. you know, she has any, that, and then she'll know and she'll probably learn more yep. when she hears it, but she can kind of get a base with me. Yeah. And our mom, like, talked about it with us, too. Like, like even beforehand, like, getting into all of that, like, she explained it, like... And we already had some previous knowledge from, like, smoking. Yeah. And, like, we, ha we got information from, like, other sources, like... So, like, occasionally watching the news sometimes. Yeah. Not a lot, but... Yeah, like, information from other sources, and then from our parents telling us that, oh, it's very bad and stuff yes. like that. Yeah. Yes. All right. And how do you guys know when to talk to them? Because there's obviously going to be a million other topics that you're going to have to broach. How do you decide when that is? I, I kind of get a feeling, usually. I mean, I kind of go based a little bit by me when yeah. I was around their age and okay. those things, but also what I see. Yeah. And then I always kind of talk to my husband. Yeah. And I'm like, what do you... You know, what do you think? Should, should we bring this up? Is it time or whatever? Or if I've heard them say or something, just joke about it. And I'm like, mm -hmm. let me talk about it yeah. so that they really know what that means. Because yeah. sometimes they'll, you know, kids joke about things and they don't even know what it you actually means. So, like a video or they or saw or with it or something. Yeah. Yeah. And if I hear the words for sure, I'll, I'll talk about it. Or But if not, I'll kind of yeah. get that feeling that, okay, I think it's kind of time we... Yeah. So you kind of just wait and wait it out. How about you? Just ask them, hey, are you, have you experienced this yet? Anything you guys want to talk about, you want to know about? Dad and I are here. Mm -hmm. Emojis you don't know that we might not know either. <laughs> <laughs> we have to look up. I think that's the piece that when we look, think about like the COVID and, and adults kind of making better decisions together, you know, I think part of what happened with COVID is it made it hard for adults to talk to each other about what you were saying, the yeah. depression or the stress, right? Yeah. I think adults had a hard time leaning on each other for that. And when it comes to like drugs and alcohol, adults don't like talking about it. Yeah, yeah. They don't. Totally. I think people sometimes worry about like, I'm sure your moms talk to your friends' moms, right? And if you get a new friend, one of the first things parents often say is, Who's the parent? Yeah. yeah. Okay, I need to meet them, right? I need to talk to them. Yeah. And, you know, nobody wants to worry that their kid might be a bad influence. So I think sometimes it's hard for parents to say, you know, I'm a little worried about my son or my daughter because you don't want to scare away the other kid's parents. You know, I know my, my sister has two nephews, and she talks about that. Like, I don't want to tell them that he's struggling at school because I don't want him to lose his friends because I know his mom is going to want to protect him, you know? Do you guys find any of that sometimes where it can be hard? Um, I mean, we have a pretty tight... She's, one of, my, she's one of my we best friends. You guys are tight. So yeah. in it's that a regard, good group. it's very like we're, I think we're almost like family. Feels where it's very, it's nice to have that. I know I have siblings, and may, they may they might not have all that. You yeah. know, we have each other. We we go to, but I would imagine that yes, you know, I, I, that if that was something, it would probably be hard. But thankfully, I think that's why you know friendships, which I encourage them to to have yes. those close friends that are behind you. Mm -hmm. You can't, you have that. It's a special thing to have, and it definitely makes parenting so much stronger. So, like, Kim, what do you think about this? Is, you know, whatever. Just feed off each other. And I don't feel judged by, by, by that, by at least my close, close friends. Like, What has been the scariest part for you with him going to high school? The unknown. Yeah. Um, yeah, the especially because it's like a public school. There's and there's a lot of kids. It's oh, 3,000, yeah. 3,300. Mm -hmm. That's over 700 kids a glass. Yeah. Oh, it's eight, yeah. 800, 800, something like that. Yeah. yeah. Did you notice a change in your friend group 
from middle school to high school. Research shows that like for boys from eighth grade to high school, seventh, eighth and ninth grade, boys experience major changes in their friend groups. Like you guys just kind of grow out of certain things and someone, you know, grows out of baseball cards and now they're more into girls or now they're more into computers and someone else is done with video games and wants to play sports. And, you know, boys experience this major shift. We don't have that problem. We as girls have the other problem, which is the drama of that girl at that table saying something mean because she doesn't like that girl at that table. We have that drama. But the boys don't have that. Yes. But you did you didn't see too much of that. Not too much yet, no. Good. Yeah. Good. I'm glad to hear that. Just to prep you, that's entirely possible. Yeah. It can be a little upsetting. Cause sometimes that I remember like, you know, for for me, and you guys can share when it happened for you, for me that happened when I went from high school to college. My friends just changed. Just changed. You know, I was still more focused on my studies and a lot of my friends got a little more interested in partying. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, yeah, I can't party because if I get bad grades, my parents are going to kill me. So I, <laughs> I couldn't do that. So that we kind of drifted. Did you guys have that happen at all? I think uh, my, a lot of mine, I left and a lot of my good friends stayed. So yeah. I had to meet new, a new yeah. group. So that's kind of what happened with, with me. With, with those. I still actually keep in touch with my core friends from high school. Oh, cool. I mean, when we can, you know, but uh, college I had to like kind of Starting learn how to make new friends and kind of learn more about myself in that way, which was a really cool time too. Kind yeah. of scary as well, but yeah, yeah it For teaches sure. you. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. How about you, Kim? I, well, I went away to college, and then I came back a year later. So I, my friends, I still have friends from high school. Yeah. The same group. Wow. Yeah, so that's, that's good. Nice. What are the attitudes of the kids at school around, well, I guess vaping is what makes sense for your grade. Vaping's probably what makes sense for your grade, but yeah. you guys might be starting to talk about, like, marijuana now, too. I don't know. I don't really see that as much as vaping. No. Va vaping's a lot more common. Than that. Good. Good. The kids are, do the kids talk about marijuana at all? I don't. I don't really hear it. Now. Good. Well, that's good. I don't really hear much about vaping. I just see it. So. You just see it. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's all over the bathrooms. Yeah. Can't even go to the bathroom at school anymore. <laughs> he, sa he says he walks into the bathroom. And all he sees is a puff cloud. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I saw that a couple of times going to science class. Some schools are like, don't even, you can't use that bathroom because we had to lock that bathroom. You have to go to this bathroom. And I'm like, forget it, I'll hold it. But see, when I went to high school, and I'm sure when your moms were in high school, they, kids were smoking cigarettes. Oh, yeah, that was popular. Oh, at my school, they, like, my school is pretty old, but they used to have a smoking section out yeah. front of the school. Wow, really? Yeah. Yeah. Mine did, too. So what happens if you walk into a bathroom and you know somebody's been vaping? What do you, oh, no, what do you all do? Oh, no, just turn right around. You just turn around? Yeah, I just turn around and wait till, like... Because, like, I, I know when people are in there and, like, when people are out. Because, like, I get out of class pretty quickly yeah. every time. So, like, I'll know when I'm able to, like, when I can go and there's nobody in there. Because I'm, like, the first one to get in there. Okay. Like, I have my schedule. Gotcha. <laughs> you got your routine. Yeah. Yeah, it's an I open ha window. Yeah, works. I have like two combined classes because um, two of the classes are like a part of like a single one, and mm -hmm. I stay in like the same classroom. So in between those periods, I'll go to the bathroom because okay. I'll, I'll have a lot of time too. Some of the teachers are helpful. I was at one school last a couple of weeks ago, where the teacher like said, "There, this is the one bathroom that I can monitor." So he deliberately lets the kids go use that bathroom because he already that's knew, smart. you know, this is a bathroom that's monitored and it's clean and it's safe. And because mm -hmm. I think the worrisome part is, you know, you walk in, there might be kids in there vaping, but, you know, you could be the kid who says you shouldn't do that in here, but nobody actually ever wants to be that person. What, what, is there like a, some, some sort of program or some something that you know you can go to anonymously if you saw something. Fortify FL. Yeah, can oh, you yeah, they have that, that on the is? portal. Um, well, I, I see haven't. The signs, but I don't know what it is. So I haven't 
really had to use it because there's nothing really I don't even know how the layout works, but I know it's a website where you can go on through the district portal and you can uh, report someone or something that's happening, right? Um, and you can submit it anonymously, so. Oh, okay. How do you decide when to use it? Um, when I see something out of the ordinary and shouldn't be happening. So how do you determine what that is? Um, As Usually I would go to my mother, but ah, it doesn't... So you seek your consultant, mm -hmm. as I like to call it. Yeah, um, but it doesn't happen, like, at all. So. Hasn't, you've never seen anything. What kind of things do you think if you saw, you would say, I'm definitely going to report that? Someone brought a weapon. Yeah. Yeah, but that's a big one. That's a big one. How about you? What do you think would be your, like, all right, I should probably... Well, I mean... The issue about being in like a public high school is that like a lot of people are vaping, too many to count. So yeah. you really can't use what he said fortify. Yeah. You like it's just not gonna work. There's like a thousand people that are probably here. Yeah. So in that case you probably can't use it. You well could, it you would probably just be could. Busy. It would just be it like be super busy. busy, yeah. Yeah, because if you got three thousand kids at your school, it's about twenty percent, so that's what, six hundred? Who's good at math? I think it's around 600, yeah. What kinds of questions, because we can turn this a little bit and start asking the moms tough questions. What do you want to know about when mom was in your grade? Like, since, like, when you were going to a private school, okay. was there more of, like, vaping in the private school or the public school? Well, when I was growing up, there was, like, no vaping. <laughs> Older. Thanks, yeah. But we yeah. did have cigarettes, and I'll have to say, it was way less at the private school than public. With public, it was way more. I, I, I was there a lot more. A little bit. Yeah. 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 Were the consequences more if they caught someone in the private school? Yeah, you would be out, kicked out. <laughs> um, with a private school. Yeah. With a public, I think you'd probably get suspended or something, detention maybe. Um, you know. So yes, definitely consequences were much higher because people are paying money. You don't have to go there, you know. Where you? Were there many people that broke the rules? I mean, especially outside of school, I would say at parties and stuff. Yeah. Do they smoke a lot of smoke cigarettes and, you know, all that, both private and public. That was the same. I, I encountered yeah. that everywhere. So. Yeah, that was my experience in high school, too, is, you know, whether it was a public school or a private school, you know, the kids were, I actually thought that the kids that were at the private school in my town were using more drugs and alcohol because the crowd was so, I mean, it was a, just a smaller group of kids. So the peer pressure, it was like, if you had 50 people and 30 people are using drugs and alcohol, those other 20... You know, they were heavily influenced by those kids. Whereas in the public school, I could just say, all right, well, I don't know, I just don't do that. What do you want to know about when your mother was a freshman in high school? Bum, bum, bum. Well, I want to know what was, like, going on. Like, what was, like, I don't know, what was, like, the, the thing to do? Like, like, was it, like, smoking? Like, yeah, cigarettes, alcohol, it was all around. Um, I was a cheerleader, so I couldn't put myself in that position because then I would get kicked off the squad and cheerleading was everything to me. So in sports, I'm a very athletic person. I was back then, I am now, if you ask anybody. <laughs> it's an obsession. <laughs> I guess it's a good one to have. Um, so um, yeah, it was around me. My friends, we didn't really you know, smoke, drink, any of that. Did you ever have any friends that you, um, like, stopped being friends with because they started to get into that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Because then when you hang out with them, that's a rat, you know, ex yeah. eventually you're going to get caught up in that. Yeah. What was that like? Um, it was, I mean, it was okay because I had another group. I had, you know, all different groups. Yeah. You know, I was friends with everybody. So it was easy to say, okay, I'm going to step away from that group, go to this one, this one, and that one, where, um, you know, away from that yeah. type of... 
One of the questions that I ask um, the middle school kids a lot, I ask the high school kids, but high school kids stop wanting to listen to me. But the middle school kids I ask a lot, like, what makes it hard to say no to a friend? You know, to say, I don't want to do that. It's really scary to be the one who sometimes has to be the one that says, like, that's just not right. Like, it, that yeah, takes a lot of courage. You know, I think there's, there's fear. You know, I certainly get nervous. Yeah. And I think that gets harder when it's, like, at school and it's a, a friend that you're going to have to see the next day. And it's even yeah, worse be because you guys have the social media where, like, not only do you have to see them the next day, but... Now, after school, they're texting and... Yeah. Oh, yeah, I love calling our friends after school. And we just talk about homework and, like, <laughs> everything. Do you FaceTime or talk to them or I, text? I FaceTime them. You FaceTime. And I'm usually, like, playing some, like, play, drawing or something, and yeah. we just talk to each other while we're doing our own stuff. Cool. <laughs> See, that's like having them come visit. Yeah. Nice. Now, who's got social media accounts? <laughs> I got, do. You've got yeah. TikTok, right? it's on private, though. Okay. Only my friend can see it now. Okay, very good, yeah. very good. So what do you do if you get like a, a friend request from someone you don't know? I usually delete it and find the account and block it. Oh, very good. Very good. Do you let mom know? Yeah. It hasn't happened. Oh, okay. Yeah, she's so like linked in on my phone. Perfect, very good. And um, it hasn't happened that much, but like. I have a friend whose daughter gets a little sneaky. And so every once in a while, I have to send a friend request to see if she'll accept it. And if she accepts it, i got to call her mom. That's a great idea. <laughs> she doesn't yeah. like me anymore. Because the kids often ask me, if drugs are so bad and vaping is so bad and alcohol is so bad, why do they sell it? Qatar, like, banned alcohol sales and stuff. You know, we live in a country that allows us to make our own decisions. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's really important that everyone have the right information so that you can make the decision yeah. that's best, right? Yes. And, and that was the example I gave, that, you know, Qatar, they're a country where selling alcohol is against the law. And you, you can't. And yet they've got, like, the biggest sports event in the world yeah. happening. And it, most other countries, there is a lot of alcohol with that. But that's how their country functions. You know, there's no right way or wrong way, but in the United States, there's probably less you violence. get to make a choice. Not ever I mean, there's probably less violence and less, well, that's a great less point other things. To even bring up, because I know you and we have, she has a brother, older sure. brother, have asked, like, well, well how come? you know, you drink or your, your friends right. drink yeah. or whatever, all that. And it's a valid question. Like, yeah. why do other, you know, why is this even allowed? So yeah. it is something to yeah, understand. And, and you know, it's, it's one of those things where alcohol is, it's been around for centuries, right? And every family, every culture, every religion, you know, has a different approach to it. You know, and, you know, I grew up in a house, my family was from Portugal, and wine was just, like, my grandpa used to drink wine with his lunch, because it was, you know, like my soda. But I never saw any of my uncles or my dad drink to excess. Their behavior never changed, you know, it just was a beverage. And I remember when my dad talked to us, that was what he said is, you know, it's, it's a beverage. And most of the time it doesn't actually taste good, you know, and you, if you treat it like it's something other than a beverage, you're not using it properly. It's just a drink. It's just a beverage like water or juice. And if you're going to treat it like it's part of a party, then you're not using it properly, right? If you're using it because you've had a stressful day, then you're not using it properly. Mm -hmm. If you can't dump out what's in your glass and put water in it and feel the same way, then you're not using it right. Yeah. Right? It Definitely. should just be, it shouldn't matter if this were to be a glass of wine or this were to be a glass of water, I shouldn't have a different attitude about this than I do that. That was what my dad said, like. Yeah, that's a very good point, actually. Yeah. yeah.
Well, then again, obviously, like, you could have preference over which beverage you and that, Yeah, exactly. You might prefer how the red wine tastes to the apple juice, but if you're just having it because it's what you like drinking, then when you're done with it, you're done with it, and yeah. you don't need more. Exactly. You know, and it doesn't feel like that's what you have to have. It's just what is there. Yeah. You know, I think there's... It's important to kind of consider how we think or feel about something. Yeah. You know, like, do you, in high school, do you hear the kids talk about alcohol at all? No, no. Very good. No, I don't either. Yeah, yeah. I hope not. Yeah, we were just talking about, it's like, gonna panic. what we did in history. Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys remember what the kids would talk about alcohol, maybe in... High in high school, college, for sure, yeah. yeah. But again, it was that mentality of like, let's drink, you know, let's yeah, party. Let's break the rules. It wasn't a, it was more about drinking, like yeah. to drink, to party, but not yep. thank you. Which is, like you said, it's not. The attitude. My parents good. also grew up in a different light with that. Yeah. It was like they didn't understand that concept of <laughs> that, you know. <laughs> Yummy. So I think it's important that we, we consider how we think of things. So questions for me. I have a question because I know you do presentations. I do. To kids of yes. like elementary school. Yeah. So do have you any had any like reactions that are like they have talked about experience of their own that yeah. they don't like? Or yeah. That's a good question. So. Last year, I went to a fourth and fifth grade class, and I was teaching about the dangers of vaping. And one, one little boy came to me at the end of class, and he was, he was really panicked. And this has happened a few times, where the little boy was pretty panicked. And he said, well, I tried it once. What did I do to my brain? Um, and I had to kind of reassure him that, you know, it was one time and if he's not continuing to do it, his brain will kind of fix itself and so will his lungs. But he was definitely scared and then I felt really bad. So I wasn't trying to scare him, but I did need him to know how serious it was. I mean, it got the job done, now he won't do it again. Mm-hmm. Well, I think if the kids visually see the consequences or th that happens when you do certain substances, then it sinks in. If you just yeah. talk about it, it'll go in one ear and out the other. But if they really see the effects of what they're doing, yes. it'll be an eye opener. So I think it's a great that this is being implemented in the schools. Yeah, and there's, there's a lot of kids who um, they just genuinely don't know. They don't know. You know, they thought it was just, I mean, that's what he said. I thought it was flavored water. Mm -hmm. I thought it was okay. And he just didn't know, just didn't know. So, you know, this is where it's important to kind of, you know, like you said, kind of keep an ear out for what are they seeing? What are they hearing? What did I hear? Let me just check in so that you know, because we don't know what we don't know, right? Yeah. But that happens a lot. I have kids come forward. <clears throat> Sometimes kids, I think, are worried about siblings, too, that maybe they you know do it. And then yes. they're like, well, what do I do if my older sibling's doing it? Like, I'm scared for them, but I don't yep. want to rat them out. They're my, yep. you know. So yeah, that's a hard thing. It is a hard thing. Or if you have a friend that you care about that you know it might be doing it and you know you don't want them to do it because you know how bad it is. Like, what do you do? Yeah, it's hard. What do you think your friends would say if they were doing it and you were to say, you know, you shouldn't do that. It's not good for you. It really depends on the friend in our relationship. But mm -hmm. let's say it was like a really close friend that they trust a lot with like my opinion. Mm -hmm. I think they would be like, okay, I didn't know that. Um, I will stop now, but if it's someone who like wants to go their own way and doesn't really listen to me, I'll try my best, but they might just be like, no, this is my life, this is what I want to do. Yep. And I try my best to tell them like what would happen, and it's really their decision it's all you on that. Do. Yeah, That's right. But people know, so they stop. It's the hard part when you have to let people make their own decisions, even though you know they're making one that's probably not a good one. 
house mm. dinner, everyone. Mm. Oh, it's great, yeah. Awesome. Delicious. Is there anything else I can bring over? I'll get some more ice water for a moment, but do you need any more ketchup or anything? Is that you guys um, need ketchup? Yeah, probably. Yeah. I'm good. Oh. I'm good. How's the burgers? Very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the food's delicious. Yeah. These are really good. Look at crab cakes. Okay. How you? Yeah, see? That was a surprise. Surprises are always fun. That's how I like to do it. More questions for me. I love answering questions. Mm -hmm. I have another question. Okay. So, like the younger kids that you teach? Yeah. Do they like ask more questions than the older kids because they're more confused? Ooh, that is a really good question. Let me think about that for a second because I go into fourth grade, fifth grade, uh, middle school and high school. Um, I, yeah, I think you're, yeah. I think that would, be a, that would be a really good hypothesis right there is that, yeah, the younger kids tend to ask me more questions. The older kids, I think what they do is they won't necessarily ask me a question. They'll try to kind of challenge what I say. They'll try to find a way to, to say what I'm saying isn't true. You know, and every once in a while, I'll have someone while I'm talking use their phone to check what I said. And then they say, well, that's not what this says. And I say, I know that's not what that says because that's not where I got the information. Go to this place and you'll see. Right, so I always talk about, I'm sure you, you just did a research thing, so you know about .gov, mm -hmm. .edu's versus .coms, right? Mm -hmm. So we well, always my teacher that. says, like, try to stay away from the governmental sites and, like, try to use, like, edu, like. Edu is better. Yeah. Yeah. Edu is better. One of the things that the kids do say a lot is sometimes they'll come over and what they ask me are questions like, how do I help my parents or how do I help my friends? You know, I think sometimes what happens with kids is they don't always want to ask the adult for help. And sometimes, particularly at middle and high school level, they don't want to ask an adult, but they'll ask their friends. You know, if they're struggling or they're anxious or they're depressed, they'll talk to a friend before they talk to their parent. Does that ever happen where you have a friend who's talking to you about something and you're like, uh, shouldn't you talk to your mom? I mean, like, there's been times when, like, maybe someone said something rude to my friend at the school mm -hmm. that day. So they'll tell me, obviously, because they can't talk to their parents before, because yep. they're, they're, they're at school. So they'll talk to me and I'm like, I'm really sorry that happened to you. I try the best to make them feel better give them my best advice and then they'll of course tell their parents usually after. Good. Because all my friends have a pretty good relationship with their parents oh, too. Oh, very good. Yeah. Very good. Now when that happens, do you let mom know? Yeah, most of the time. Oh, very good. Um, there hasn't been like that rough of things. Like maybe it was something super small that like I didn't really know that much. Like they just mentioned it one time. I might have forgotten it if it was like super small. But like things that I think are more important, I always tell, so. You always check in. Yeah. She does. True. True story. You guys are close. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even though I kind of annoy her sometimes. Hello, well, what? Yeah. That's what happened? Just sometimes. What happened, just sometimes. Sometimes. What happened here? Yeah. Just so you know, mom gets really annoying through middle and high school. But then you start to really True. like her again. And, and she'll, you know, it was the same with you and your mom, right? Yeah, yeah it's true. Yeah. My mom drove me crazy for at least 10 years. Yeah. Now we're good buddies. Now we're good buddies. But yeah, this is a tough time. Yeah. Keep it going as best you can. Be patient. Like I said, there's no YouTube video yeah. for mom about how to help a daughter go through middle and high school. Yeah. Because your middle and high school is going to be very different than hers. Now you guys don't do any social media, right? Mm -mm. Do any of your friends? Wait, you guys yeah, must do the do. gaming stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I have games, yeah. All right, so that's kind of social media. You talk I to your friends over the video it. games and stuff? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And how does that work? Well, it's not really the same, because, like, like, with all the games, like, you could just, like, contact your friends and stuff. Like, instead of, like, 
with like a bunch of people or a bunch of random people. It's like with a you have a group you have a group yeah. that they already yeah. established in the gaming. They build things. Yeah. Right? You guys are building things. It's not like they're talking about other people or... Yeah. It's all question. focused on that. So, yeah. with, with the littler kids, like, do most of them come in there already, like, are already knowledgeable on the topic? Or, like, are, are most of them, like, confused and, like, don't know what it is or have never heard it before? Most of the time they've all heard of it before, but they don't usually have the right information. Okay. Yeah. So their parents must have like told them some way that it's, it might not be good. They just don't have like, they don't know exactly know, know why. why. Yeah. yeah, I think that happens sometimes. And then there's a lot of kids whose parents don't talk about it at all. Mm -hmm. And they know because they know their friends, you know, they heard it at school or they saw it online. But most of the time, no. When I ask kids like, do you talk to your parents? Particularly when it comes to alcohol or marijuana do you talk to your parents about these things and a lot of the kids will say no no a lot of kids will raise their hand and say no we've never had a single conversation usually in high school like juniors and seniors and sophomores they'll they'll say they have but middle school no and the kids often have a lot of opinions and perceptions and they've never talked to their parents about it which is the scary part right you know, because at middle school level, you know, that is um, an age where they are developing kind of... And they're curious. Or yeah, they're curious and they start to create um, an attitude or perception, right? So one of the things that we know from research, and I like to point it out, so we always use the Monitoring the Future study. Okay, now this is a study where they ask kids all across the United States to fill out a survey and they ask them a bunch of questions about have they ever tried vaping or alcohol or marijuana and then they ask how risky do you think it is to try it one time or to try it occasionally and they'll also ask do you approve or disapprove of marijuana alcohol or vaping so we always read those every year it's actually time for the next one to come out um, but middle school we know that kids' attitudes towards marijuana are actually much more accepting than they used to be. So 1992 was the year that most kids disapproved of marijuana and said no one should be using it, most kids. And since 1992, it's now turned and most kids don't actually think it's that risky. Um, and a lot of that is because the music changed in 1992. You know, yeah. music has an sure. impact, right? Mm -hmm. So that was a, a turning point in people's perceptions. So when I try to encourage parents to have the conversation, it's about getting as early as you can to talk about what do you hear about it, what do you think about it, because the science never changed. Marijuana was what it was in 1990 and it's what it is today. They were exactly the same. The attitude changed because music, right? That's not science. And if we're trying to make decisions about what's healthy, we wanna make those decisions based on science. But middle school is when they're starting to mold the attitude and perception, right? So that's like the time that you wanna kind of start asking, hey, let me know, what do you know about the lingo? You know, what do you know about what do kids say, right? What do you think the moms want to ask me? Ooh. What's the toughest question you've been presented with, whether it was a fourth grader or fifth grader? Um, and how did you answer it, or did you deflect, or how? Well, I never deflect, um, never deflect. So what, um, you know, a standard philosophy is when a kid asks a question, it's a, it's a loaded question and it's coming from somewhere. And when we deflect, um, what we're doing is we're actually giving a meta message. So meta messages are the messages behind the message. So um, for example, if your burger came to the table and I didn't let you pick it up and I just went, okay, that's fine, I'm gonna go ahead. I would be doing this and I'd be saying, oh, this is a really good burger. But 
but by doing that, I'm kind of giving you the message that you're not supposed to touch it or you can't handle it on your own. Yeah. So when, we, when a kid asks a question, when we deflect, what we're accidentally telling them is don't talk about it. So we never deflect. Um, I think the more difficult questions that I've gotten, um, I did have a student who was only in the fifth grade ask, you know, what if, what if your parents are the ones asking you to use drugs and alcohol? You know, and that's, that's a tough question. Um, sadly, I didn't have time alone because I would have wanted to find out, like, gee, what made you think of that question? Because this is a heavy question, right? And it may be they just had a really big imagination and thought, like, who's the hardest person to say no to? And, well, the hardest people to say no to is mom and dad, unless they're telling you what to wear. Yeah. That's a lot easier to say no. Um, but for big things. So, um, you know, I think... I answered it by talking about how hard it can be to say no sometimes, um, particularly when we are really worried about how that person feels about us. So, um, you know, I said I think uh, the best thing to do if that were ever happening, I would want a kid to talk to either a teacher or a school counselor or a grandparent or an aunt or an uncle or someone that they felt could help have a conversation with their parents, right? Um, that I think was the hardest. I think some of the other more difficult questions are kids who, you know, they say, I'm worried my mom or my dad drinks a lot or they smoke and what can I do to get them to stop? You know, and the answer to that is nothing. You know, and that's a tough answer to give, yeah. you know. Um, it's kind of like you said, you do your best, but people are going to make their own decisions, and that's hard when it's your mom or your dad. Yeah. So that's where, you know, the answer I have always given is, you know, you got to take care of you, because if your mom or your dad is <clears throat> using alcohol or, you know, if they have the disease of addiction, then they can't be there for you. You know, yeah. they're just, they're sick. They can't. And so the best thing you can do is make sure someone else is there for you. So talking to people and making sure an aunt, an uncle, a grandparent, a teacher, a counselor, you know, knows when you're hurting or you're upset because then those people will make sure you have what you need. And that's the best thing you can do because your parent can't do it for you, even though they want to. Mm -hmm. When the kids ask tough questions, you have to lean into the question. Because when you shy away, yeah. you don't get enough information. So you dive in with total willingness and curiosity. And usually what unfolds is the kid will elaborate further and then it's less panicky. I mean, kids aren't terribly eloquent sometimes with difficult topics. So you lean in, lean in. Once you let them know you're okay with talking, they give you way more information. You know, because they want to talk to somebody, they want to get it out, yeah. they want to yeah. tell you. You know, that kid asked about parents asking you to use drugs and alcohol, and for all I know, they saw it on TV. Yeah, you know, I can sit and panic that maybe this kid's unsafe, but they probably saw it on TV that they shouldn't have been watching. But you know, and woof, I dive in, I find that out, okay, I don't have to be so panicked, but dive in, dive in. Turns out everything difficult in life, you might as well just dive in. <clears throat> Be brave. Yeah. Be brave. Well, I would ask you, um, as our kids get older, or even if we have friends, you know, what's the best way to keep the communication going? Because it's not all what you can't just be like, what you know, what what have you found keeps relationships open and the best, the best way to keep um, or to tell even a friend that's having yeah. I think, a hard time. I think the best thing to do is be open to the reality that the communication's going to shift, right? Giving them permission if there are things that you don't want to talk to me about because you're getting older and you don't, you're afraid what I'll say. I mean, you guys can chime in if you can relate, but I think sometimes there are things you don't want to tell your parents because who wants a lecture? Right? I mean, you know that's coming. But when we're open to recognizing and saying to a kid, like, I get it. You know, there are things you're not going to want to talk to me about. Um, but when you can at least say, then who will you talk to? 
because you got to have somebody, yeah. you know. Yeah. That's what I would say with them, they have each other. They're so lucky to have brother, and they're close in age. Mm -hmm. They get along. So if you don't want to talk to me, maybe bounce it off each other. Yeah. Since yeah. Thomas is in freshman in high school or whatever, it might be. Or grandma, grandparents. Grandparents are good because they're like allies. So like if you really make a mistake and you really screw something up really bad, you usually want another person there like a, you know, like a lawyer in court to help. Like, all right, mom and dad are going to be so mad. Um, but, you know, I, my grandmother would do that for me. She wouldn't let my parents yell at me. Doing wonderful in here. Yes. Perfect. Yeah, so I think the, that's the best way to do it is to acknowledge that it's safe and okay Thank you. for our communication style to change. Yeah. You know, and I think when we validate that, it, it makes it easier for like the journey to go. Okay. Because what I find is some parents will hold rigidly to, no, my kids and I are really close, they tell me everything. And you know, kids don't tell their parents everything. Shh, we'll keep that between us. But when the parents rigidly hold on to that, the kids are still not telling them anything. And because the parent is so rigid about that, they don't even feel safe and comfortable coming back around. Because if the parent is believing, we're tight, we're close, they tell me everything, the kid knows that's what a parent wants to believe. And so if the kid has gone off and not told stuff, if they come back around, they have to blow that whole image up. And no kid wants to do that to their parent. So when you say, I would like us to always be close, but I understand we're gonna drift, then the kid knows, okay, I drifted, I can always come back. But when you're too rigid, they don't feel permission to come back. Because yeah, when they come back, you're mad. Right, because that's what happens, because I'm coming back. But now the answer is, I thought you told me everything. So just be like, be like, if it's not me, just make sure you're safe yeah. and try, you know, yeah, like you said, talk to somebody else or research, at least do something. Yeah. Know that I, you know, I am here, but I'm that here, changes. but I get it. That it changes, but it's scary. Honestly, as a parent, that's the scariest. So that would be my number one question is, what have you found that, that holds that bond as long It's being as possible open together. to It may not it, be open to the fact that it's going to shift, but always, you know, make sure there are other consultants, you know, that you got to, we got to always have the adult. And that might mean that you kind of tag team with, you know, here's, if, if your kids share with you, you know, it's my aunt, you know, she's the person that I would go to. Well, great, then you and the aunt need to connect with, okay, there are some non-negotiables that I need you to know I must know. And then let the aunt be the one who says, okay, listen, I can't keep this from your mom. So that if you're going to someone other than mom, you want to know when that person's gonna say, you know what, Bella, I think we need to tell mom. And you can say, no, I wouldn't have told you. And they would say, well, we'll tell her together, right? Or we'll only tell this part, because that's the important part. So that's what you want to promote. Which, by the way, if you ever want to get a therapist for your kid, that's the philosophy, is you want a therapist who's willing to, to keep your child's confidence, but also be clear with the kid about, listen, there's some stuff I got to tell your mom. You know, I tell kids this all the time. I, you know, what we talk about will stay here, but there's gonna be some things that like, I gotta tell your mom and I'll never tell her if, I'll never tell her until you know. So if I feel there's something, I always say, this is something we gotta tell mom. And they sometimes get upset, but I say, okay, well, let, maybe we won't tell her today. Let's talk about it. We'll talk next week and figure out what to do. And then we negotiate it. Yeah. Middle and high schoolers right now have very extreme levels of depression and anxiety. Or at least they feel they're very depressed and they're very anxious. Mm -hmm. What do you think that's about? For me? Yeah. Um, what gets you nervous? I don't get depressed or anything that serious. But like, I'll have sometimes be stressed about like tests. Mm -hmm. Like we have tests like, sometimes I'll go to school one day and I'll have tests 
first period, second period, they're mm. like straight in a row. Like the teachers don't know that they're giving tests on the same yeah, day. Yeah, like I was going to say, like, so in, in elementary school, yeah. like the teach, you only have one teacher most of the time, or two yeah, if you're in so fifth grade. Knew. So they know like not to give everybody like a hundred tests a day. Oh. But in this school, it's kind of hard. The other thing I get anxious about study. is like <laughs> pop quizzes that have yeah. nothing to do with what we learned. I'm like, oh my god. Mm. Pop so quizzes just made me panic. I know. That and every time I forgot to do my homework, which was <laughs> like at least three times a week. Yeah, another, <laughs> it's mostly school. That's the stressful thing. Another stressful thing is when your teacher gives you like way too much homework like there always is a day when all your teachers decide to give you a big amount of homework for no re reason on a random day and it oh. happens to be the same day and then i'll have a dance and i'll be home late and i'll be like staying up trying to get all my homework done but i'll well, test the next sense. day and then i'll have a test the next day so yeah i don't think i could stomach um, that very well my friend told me that like Every day that he has like baseball practice or a baseball game, his teachers just decide to give him loads and loads of work, so it's annoying. Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah that's hard. Yeah, yeah I definitely. Think, how does yeah. he juggle that? How like, do you juggle that? after curricular activities <laughs> and trying to fit that in with school is definitely going to be yeah. a challenge. You know, when I was people. a kid, you know, I don't remember any of my friends being as involved in things as kids are today. Yeah. Yes. Like, there's research that shows that kids are overscheduled a lot yeah. because they're in so many different activities. And now the activities, because, you know, the industries are frankly making money off of it, there's a higher demand. I mean, how many days a week do you dance? Every day. Seven? Yeah. Well, six. Six. But yeah. There's, like, not Sundays. Yeah, like, that's a lot. We, we have conversations <coughs> about it all the time. I'm like, oh. we can stop. Yeah. But you, in order to be in... And in the competition, because if not, you're doing rec dance, and it's not as like, fun. It's not the, it's not the same Yeah, thing. it's just yeah. like you do it for one. I love performing, and with rec, you do it one time as a recital at the end of the year. Also, none of my friends do it. But I, I love dancing. I really don't want to quit because it's super fun. Like it. It's just very busy all the time. Yeah. Yeah, it's like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Saturday. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And I think, you know, I think sometimes it's good to have these things, right? Because I think sometimes, you know, kids will say, you know, I don't want to vape because I play soccer. And, and so I think it can be good in that way, right? And I think sometimes... Oh, our menus here. Oh, see, so it's our favorite part. So banana bread muffin. First one on there is the house favorite. Has vanilla ice cream on it. Bunch of other goodies. I think oh, the fried cider donuts mm. are the way to go. Yeah. And then I do have, if you wanted like berries or whatnot, because I know there's an allergy, I can do fresh fruit. Um, but yeah, and then I also have okay. Belgian chocolate yeah. cookies and cream ice cream from a local shop. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, I do like lilies. It's right there. It's yes. so good. Yes. But yeah, I'll give you all a few minutes to kind of look and not look totally back in. I'm going to just go with the ice cream. You're going to go with the ice cream? I'm a yeah. big ice cream girl. So I think that like sports and activities and things are good, but they yeah. can also be real stressful because yeah. you sort of, you spread pretty thin. Yeah, like doing a solo on stage, one of the scariest things. You're backstage, you keep going through it through your head, you overthink it, and then when you walk on, it's like... Yeah, but yet again, it, it'll, yeah. it could take your mind off schoolwork. Then yeah. you don't have to like think about school. It's like all the choreography, it just disappears and you just kind of go with it. <laughs> and you just, you just remember it. Yeah, it's like muscle memory. Very good. Yeah. But sometimes... I'm to watch. <laughs> you, you should. Pretty amazing. Another good thing is like when I have schoolwork that I'm stressed about, it helps me forget it when I'm dancing. Like through mm. Anything, it just goes away. should always make sure you dance. Yeah. Are you going to want to teach dance, too, when you get older? I want to become, like, a vet, but, oh. like, a veterinarian. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, part-time job, dance teacher. Like, yes. when I'm starting, like, in college, I want to like, take You want to take dance? Yeah. And sort of be a dance. You could be, like, a dance instructor assistant. to kids. I could be an assistant, yes. too. Yeah. How old do you have to be to be an assistant? Because I know you can do that pretty young. Yeah, like, we've had, I've assisted a class, like, of babies. It's <laughs> my ballet teacher. Oh, how cool! <laughs> I loved it. It was really fun. Yeah, with the little ones? Yeah, they were like kindergarten, pre-K. It was really fun. That's pretty little. Yeah. That's pretty little. So when you're in high school, you can teach like the fifth graders. Yeah, it's like the older you get, you get like, like there'll be people who teach us that are in like 
eighth, seventh grade. Oh, okay. It doesn't have to be that much older. It can be okay. like a year older even. Nice. Just spends their like skill yeah. of dancing. But we've had like teachers that are like still in college before. Yeah. Like eighteen. So you see yourself doing all of that? Yeah, I think that would be cool. That's very good. Yeah. That's very good. I think what I find is that sometimes um, it's easier to do things like say no to friends when they want to make a bad choice. Um, when we're thinking about like, here's my, here's what I want to do, right? I want to grow up and be a vet and maybe teach some dance lessons, right? And then if you have friends that are trying drugs or alcohol, it's easier to be more focused on. Yeah, like I have dance. That's, yeah, what, I, dance that's what I say every day. I'm like, they're like, oh, do you want to go do this? I'm like, sorry, I have dance. I dance. <laughs> I dance. No go. <laughs> are you guys that committed to your stuff too? You guys do sports, right? Yeah. Baseball? Yeah. yeah. Soccer? No. Football? Pick one sport. Kyler. Does. One sport <laughs> only. Yeah, it's too much. All right, baseball. <laughs> Position? Um, usually around shortstop, second base. Oh, I pegged you for a catcher. Oh, I That's catch. Him. You're the catcher. Mm -hmm. I would have pegged that the other way. I'm, I'm not sure why. I, I have really good reflexes, so I He's can get fast. to the ball okay. quick. Yeah. He's big. Also, I, I pitch sometimes. He pitches yeah. center field. Yeah, I can see you as a pitcher. <laughs> see you as a pitcher. Now, do you guys do like rec league? Are you in the? Uh, we're doing rec, rec league right now. I'm gonna go into like I might look into travel and mm -hmm. try and get on the high school baseball team at some point. Cool. Are we thinking about getting dessert? Yeah. Um. <laughs> oh, I'm good. I'm full. Yeah. No. No. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. Uh, Everybody's take a cider donut. Okay. Chocolate ice cream. You wanna try the cookies and cream? Um, it's a Belgian chocolate cookies and cream. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Belgian yeah. chocolate, clearly. Very fancy. Be Do you want your bed, Thomas? Are you still hungry? No. Thank you. Do you want coffee or anything? I'm good. No worries, no worries. If you So what was this like? Did we talk about anything oh. that you don't usually talk about with your, your moms? I thought that it was very informative yeah, of like new like perspectives because really cool. yeah. even though we've known each other since we were born I don't think you've ever talked about this like yeah yeah but um it was very interesting to me I liked it excellent I'm glad to hear that yeah I know like this is the first time we've really like gone into depth about it yeah really had to delve into it yeah, I think what happens a lot of times is like at the end of the day, like we're busy. You've finished dance and you've got homework you've got to do. And, you know, mom and dad have to get dinner on the table and somebody needs a bath somewhere and you got to tell somebody to brush their teeth and get ready for bed. And you got all these things happening. And, you know, I think parents want to know what your life is like at school, but, you know, you don't always know what to tell them. So how was school today? What's the what's the answer? Good. I about it. Yeah, I get, so, I get so tired. I just don't want to talk at all. Yeah, I don't know. I was there all day. It was the same as yesterday. Yeah. Hello. You know, it's so like always the same. Yeah. Boring as usual. But there are things that happen on a day to day, right? That you, that you know, parents want to know what's it like for you, and and you may not think to tell them. And so, like dinner is a really good time to kind of think about, hey, what was something interesting that happened at school today. I forget everything that happens at school unless it's something big, so that's why I'm yeah. like, it was good. But like, let's say I got like an award, or I was like very happy about something, I'll always say it. Yeah, there's always something we want to brag about. There's, <laughs> there's usually something we're like, oh, jeez, yeah, let's pretend some, that didn't happen. Like, let's say my teacher is like, did something that I was like, I'll tell her. <laughs> I was like, yeah. I'm very pissed off with this teacher right now. <laughs> Yeah, I would have those conversations with my mom all the time. Now, do you guys have dinner together every day? You, you sound like very busy people. So, oh, not really. sometimes I get home late at dance compared to everyone, so they'll already have had dinner, and then my mom comes pick me up, so we'll have dinner together, or my dad, depends who it was. But we try to like have dinner together, or sometimes we have like movie night, and we watch while we eat, yep. or play a game. And there have been times where we just kind of spread out because we're too exhausted just to talk. Too busy. Yeah. But it's like half and half. Like the other night we watched a movie while we ate, but the night before we played Clue. 
Ooh, yeah. Ooh. I've been obsessed with it recently. Really? Because <laughs> I I played it in Orlando with my cousins over Thanksgiving break. Yes. And now I'm like, we have to bring it back home because we hadn't played it in such a long time. Oh. And it's all the strategy and all. Like, watching people put down their answers gives you so much. Do you like to play cards? Yeah, we play poker sometimes, like oh, cool. five cards. <laughs> you have chips and everything. Do you? Yeah. I like to play hearts and spades and high-low jack. Oh. Bet on who gets the last cookie. <laughs> Bet on who gets the last cookie. <laughs> well, so I think I think what I hope this has been helpful for you guys is that it's it's it can be difficult to have these conversations, right? You never quite know what mom's ready to talk about or. You know, oh man, is this going to turn into a lecture? Because one of the things that's hard to do with grown-ups is get us to stop talking. <laughs> Once you've asked something that makes us nervous, we feel like we need to give you all the info, right? Like, okay, I got to cover this and I got to cover it right now. So, okay, um, here's what you need to know about Big Big, and I got to get it all out. And and kids sometimes get overwhelmed. Yeah. yeah. Like, okay, I only had, I just wanted to know what that emoji was, right? Like, that's all, I didn't need the big lecture, and I need to get back to dance, or I want to FaceTime my friends, or I'm, like, in the middle of this level, like, I want to move on. Yeah, I didn't know, I didn't want to know where it originated or where it came from. Yeah, yeah, I don't need all that. I don't need all that. But, you know, I think dinner, right, conversations like this are a good time to yeah. get to a place where it's comfortable to say, because we kind of started this with me telling your moms, listen, if we get to something that you're like, uh, I don't really want to share that, I don't, I don't feel like they're at the age that I'm comfortable with that, you know, to just say that, right? And I think you want to create an opportunity where you guys feel comfortable saying, yeah, mom, enough today. I got it. Like, I don't, I don't need any more. <laughs> you know, we can talk more about this another day. I promise I'll listen again tomorrow. You know, because parents worry that you're not going to listen. Yeah. And that you didn't hear them, so they repeat themselves. Yeah. yeah. So it's, you want to create that, right, where you can have a place where you can say, you know, Mom, I want to talk about something or I have a question, um, and at least a spot where at the end of the day or whenever it is to just, here's what happened today. Um, because, I mean, it was only last week that we were in high school. Yeah, you know. it seems like that, for real. Yeah, it was last week, yeah. and yet, you know, you walk into a high school and man, we're not in Kansas anymore. Yeah. Hmm. So, it's, you know, conversations are where our parents get uh, kind of a window into what your day looks like you know because I think Kim you had said part of what's so scary about him being in high school is the unknown yeah and you are literally the only person who can help resolve the unknown for her yeah scary I think as he's focusing on academics and he hasn't really dabbled into the baseball crowd surf club or any clubs or anything like that yeah, because like, he's got a loaded um, schedule so I didn't know he was going to yeah how he's going to handle it right. so next year it'll be yeah. easier yeah so that maybe next year is when yeah when there'll be, be a little bit yeah. more of the like right because you know it's coming right the yeah. relationship stuff and you know how am I supposed to ask someone to the dance and somebody asked me to the dance and I don't want to go with them and how am I supposed to say no thanks right. without being a jerk you know, like all of that is still coming, right? And she's got visions in her head of, that are really scary, you know, and so does your mom. Like, oh my God, what's going to happen? And you guys are the only ones who can shed any light at all. Yeah, definitely. Do you, can you tell when your mom's nervous? Yes. <laughs> she doesn't get nervous very often, so I feel like it would be pretty easy to tell. She'll just like tell me. She'll I be like, I'm nervous about this. I'm like, I'm sorry. I, I I'm freaking also, out right I now. I can also like tell in her eyes. Yeah. Do you feel like you need to fix it for her? Yeah, I'll be like, what's wrong? Mm -hmm. But usually she'll just go out and say. Yeah. <laughs> she never needs you to fix it. <laughs> no. She never needs you to fix it. Ever, ever, ever. It's nice of you to want to because that's what we do for people we love. But. 
They never need you to fix it. Just like you don't need her to fix it when you're nervous or scared. You know how to be brave. And she's there to cheer you on. Yeah. It's the hard part, right, in a family is that, you know, you love each other and you don't want to hurt each other. And so you don't want to ask mom questions sometimes because you know she's probably going to be scared and panicked. And so it's fine, right? That's what kids tell me a lot. Like, I'm not doing drugs. I know my friends are, but I don't want to tell my mom because she's going to freak out, you know, and so they don't because they're afraid that their parents are going to be upset, you know? And they say, well, I know I'm not going to use it. I just won't bother telling her because why tell her? She'll just be scared and I can't fix that. So the best thing you can do is have these conversations where you get to talk about, hey, I know how you're feeling and you should know how I'm feeling, right? Like you should say to mom, all right, mom, you look nervous and I want to make it better for you. Yeah. So she could say, oh my goodness, <laughs> I got this. Yeah. <laughs> this was fun. Yes, yes. it was fun. Fantastic. Was when, are, when am I going to your house? <laughs> come over for Christmas. Christmas. Tomorrow you can come over. <laughs> I'll make some Oreo I'll pie, some Oreo pie and peanut butter it. cookies, and then afterwards you can come to my dance competition. Oh, excellent. When is the next one? February. Oh, this tastes like my pie. It tastes like your pie? Is yes. it better or not? It can't possibly be as good. I mean, I love my pie, but wow. um, this is more refreshing because it's colder mm. and creamier. But oh my God, that is really good. Wait, what is that? So, it's essentially a plain donut ah. that is made with apple cider. So it has like an apple-y flavor. Ah. Yes. Very good. It's so good. It tastes like her pie. I love it. <laughs> what is this like for you guys? <clears throat> I like, I, I love it because it's bringing up stuff that I want for you all, all to know, I'm sure, to, that you can always do. You can always talk to us without us being annoying about it, but if there is something you want to say, know that we are always here to hear you. You know, that's what I really want my kids to know, yeah. is that no matter what, um, and especially if you don't know something, bless you, hard things. We've all been, I've been through the awkward, you know, times too, we've been there. So, just to know, you know, we're here. So I definitely want to take a minute to certainly thank everyone here at the table who joined us and thank everyone who's participated by listening or watching. Um, I think what I hope everyone takes away from, from this is we want you to create a community and a context where conversations happen comfortably. At this table, we had two best friend moms who worked together to support each other as women, as moms, and thankfully their kids all get along. And this was a great way to allow everyone to speak openly about their stress levels. I think one of the things that came out of today's conversation that I think it's a good thing to kind of reflect on as you look back at your own families is, you know, all of the kids really highlighted that for them, a major stressor is school demands and extracurriculars are fun and great. And they can also add to that demand because now there's pressure on your time. And I think for parents, you know, remembering that sometimes you might need to be the one that says, we won't do that today because you do have a lot of homework and I'll take that for you. Because it can be hard for a kid to say no to something they really like when the alternative is homework that's stressful anyway. I hope everyone can kind of see that the message, right, that loud message of feeling stressed about schoolwork really only came out in a really small piece of the conversation. But when you have regular conversations together, themes will pop out. So I hope you were able to enjoy our time together. I know I certainly did. And I hope if you rewatch, you might find more themes um, because sometimes, you know, we only catch what we see and sometimes there's stuff everywhere. So thank you. 
Hi, I'm Dr. Suzanne Spencer. I'm the executive producer of the Talk With Your Mouthful podcast. And I'm Teresa Barros. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, and I proudly star in our podcast. We actually had a really interesting two mothers who are neighbors, and um, their children have grown up together. And, I, and even though the fathers are in the picture, um, it was the mothers who were having this kind of sensitive topic conversation with their children. These are kids who know each other but don't talk to each other every single day. So we got to talk about things that they probably don't typically talk about with each other. They commented after the show, we have all these play activities together. We've never had a conversation about some of the things that go on with each other in schools. That was part of what we wanted to do with this podcast. I'm so glad to hear that because the kids did get to talk with each other about, you know, the the peer pressure in schools, how they handle seeing other kids vape. I, I loved hearing them share like, oh wow, this is what makes me nervous. And most especially, which I think is what I noticed most in this episode is they did have a chance to talk about how do they balance academic demands with their extracurriculars. And they got to talk about it together in front of their moms, which was just great to see. Yeah, and actually as part of this episode, we've also done a little report that talks about, you know, where has this idea of unstructured, just regular playtime gone? How do we balance academic demands? And then, you know, all these extracurricular activities that families sometimes feel are necessary to be competitive in future education. Yeah. So it's a really tough balance. The other thing I thought was interesting is this idea of um, some families whose kids may be more sheltered and some families whose kids are informed. You know, I love them all the same, but these were definitely kids who've been very task oriented and, and in all of their activities. So this, this was a good way to sort of compare this episode's kids to some of the other episode's kids and kind of see one way isn't better than the other, of course, um, but it is nice to see the difference because then parents can kind of measure as they look at their own kid. Does it seem like my student is savvy or a little bit more on the naive side? And then plan accordingly. And I always say keep them as naive as you can for as long as you can. Thank you for watching the Talk With Your Mouthful podcast.